Hey, Kathy. Oh, you got to put on your. Uh... Got it. Awesome. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. I'm not feeling great today, but I've been doing pretty well so far for a while. Mm hmm. How about yourself? I'm doing OK. Yeah. Yeah, it's a stressful time. It is, it is. I think we're handling it pretty well though in this area. Yeah, so far. So far. I'm gonna go run upstairs to my printer to grab the agenda because I forgot to do that. So I'll be right back. Please, go right ahead. <laughs> So you get to read everything? I did. Cool. We're going to probably do... Um, I think it's a great... You think it's a good one? Yeah. It's a great proposal. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to do 10K instead of 20. Okay. Cash flow. Because yeah. normally we do a reimbursement grant. Mm-hmm. And you know the payments are like spread out over a whole the whole next year ahead. And right. what we're proposing now is to give out ten thousand, you know, twenty thousand dollars now. And I just I was I was when we were talking about re re um focusing RTZ and and I was I thought about it then, but then we were talking about this COVID relief. I didn't think about the cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. So the idea yeah. we'll start with ten and then we'll try to fundraise with GoFundMe for the rest of it and just give it out. Sure. Yeah, so that's the only thing I have to talk about and that's changed today, but. I think that makes sense. The only thing that I noticed was, I, I don't know if we're gonna ask people to itemize their lost income, but you know, it'd be good for people to try to do that because, you know, rather than estimate it, because even when I look at the school, I go, oh, we're missing this much money. And then I look at it, you know, like, oh no, if I look at the individual pieces, it's like, oh, it's not that much, you know, so. Yeah. You know, I not would, a, not, yeah we should talk about it in the board meeting obviously yeah, and I think about board meeting. So that's a good point um yeah. there was there was a little bit of pushback from the grant committee i just thought it'd be good to have some kind of record not just you know you know not just giving people money but yeah i think yeah. something yeah um yeah. i think it's exactly what we should be doing you know yeah and I think you're right about the cash flow because the arts council is going to be losing money also from things that aren't happening. So you know, it's not like sponsors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsors. Yeah. I'm just checking my email to see if people are having difficulty getting into the meeting. Let me see if I have to sure. like, let anybody in. No, it's just you and I. This is the only one I've been successful at getting into today. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. I was... My other two are not that good. <laughs> um have you been a lot doing zoom a lot yes yeah me too i'm kind of sick a, a little bit me too <laughs> me too 
staring at screens all day. It's just, yeah. Um, that's all we do. A new bird feeder. Got two bird feeders now, and that's been a source of entertainment. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. Um. Yeah. What else is new? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not much. Not much. Yeah. Uh, organizing my house a lot. Good. You know, um, that kind of stuff, and yeah. Um, what else are we doing? Uh, yeah, my girlfriend's gonna be moving in, so there's a lot of oh, good. Congratulations! Thanks. That's exciting. Yeah. So there's we have more plants and baskets in my house now. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh, I installed a dishwasher. My I own my first dishwasher I've ever owned in my life. That's it. Oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, you don't have a, you don't have a dishwasher? I do not have a dishwasher. Oh man. I wash the dishes with these hands. Me too, all, all the time. <laughs> it's the first time. For her, it was a really important thing. I was like, all right, let's put a dishwasher. And it took me, it was supposed to be like an hour and a half to install. And mm -hmm. it was 10 hours, but you know, we got it in. You <laughs> did it right though. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we did it right. Um, that's good. So that's, that's good. new and exciting. And um, does, she, does she work at Bay State? Is she does, she does. So it's she been- doing okay? She's she's still healthy. Oh, let me see. I got a Mick Courtney. We got. Let's see. Uh, she's doing okay. She just um. I have to like admit people. See waiting room. She hasn't got sick yet, and uh, it's actually her first time doing COVID patients. Mm. Her first day. Uh huh. We got people coming in. Here we go. There we are. Because she was in surgery first, mm -hmm. and then they changed her. She went on vacation because we were supposed to go away for like a week and a half, but then it got canceled. Hey, Rachel. Hey. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Hello. Lovely Rachel. mask, Freeman. <laughs> Isn't everybody, are we supposed to be wearing masks? <laughs> oh, wow. Did, did you have, do you have one of those for everybody? <laughs> Here, I have a mask in my background. I can try to put it on. It's made out of metal, though. There you go. <laughs> my mask. You know, I've been wanting for all this talk about mess. Oh, I like that one. For all this talk about mess, I've been wanting to, I'm so much wanting to have a Zorro mask. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought about wearing my, my, my COVID mask. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually Wendy's, but <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Usually oh yeah, I need something to write with. I'll be right back. Okay. How's everybody? Okay. It's an interesting light. How are you doing? Well, we got we got uh, Alan Schneider. We got to unmute him. Uh, whatever. Hopefully he gets in here. Hey, I'm here. Hey, Alan. Has anyone baked anything good recently? I bake bread every like two or three days. I made some gâteau chocolat, some like really like chocolatey. I cook every day, so yeah. What about you, Rachel? Please. It's been a while. I made a banana bread that came out pretty good, but mm. that was like last week. No, nothing exciting this week. Best focaccia of my life. Ooh, Ooh focaccia, wonderful. Yeah, and I was I was amazed after literally six to nine months of neglect, my uh, wild geese starter revived, and I've been using it. So well, look at we got, we got lots of people here. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Courtney. Hello. This is my dog, everybody. Oh, hi. Aww. What's your dog's name? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's the name Brooklyn. of my dad's dog. That's hilarious. Brooklyn came from Dakin. Nice. Does All he right. carry his bowl wherever he goes? One, no, the, well, after, after each meal, she, <laughs> yeah, she, she picks up the bowl. She carries it around the house. <laughs> And she drools in it and drools all over the place. And sometimes, sometimes she relinquishes the ball easily and sometimes she doesn't. It's a little game we play. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Freeman does too. <laughs> 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 I 
All right, I'll see. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Man. Don't ever give up the bowl, Freeman. We got Kathy service coming in and aiming. <laughs> Kathy! <laughs> yes, Avon. <laughs> Avon, you, you made it. You made it. You made it to Cancun, Avon. I did. Oh, look at him. oh my goodness! Oh no, he's not there. No, it's one of those. <laughs> You're a fake. <laughs> you have a premium account. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> Let's see. That's very funny. Yeah, you don't have to take minutes because we're recording it. Oh, really? Okay. If, if you want to take minutes, you can, but I can well, just upload the video of all us. This is like the Brady Bunch. It's amazing. If you put it on gallery view, <laughs> 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 it's like the Brady Bunch intro. Has um, everybody been having a lot of Zoom meetings? Yeah. Oh my God. This is my fourth one today. Oh, oh my. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steven Pedagorski is going to be a little, he said he's going to be coming in around like 7.30, so we can just, you know, we might even be done by then, I don't yeah. know, but maybe we won't be. So he just got back to me, yeah. so he's going to be a little late. Um, let's see, can we wait a couple oh, minutes? Oh, in terms of like, when you, I know you can be incur the minutes and stuff like that you know how are people going to be able to, have to go back and listen to it right be able oh, to, get right. to listen to it, kind of like say yeah this is correct or, i mean uh, i don't mind point, either Kathy, way. why don't you take minutes then okay <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you can go back later and transcribe the meeting from the recording mm -hmm. if you like that's true transcribe. Yeah, then you've got to listen all over again yeah well i'll get it actually started. you know there's probably there's Pardon? probably a program. There's probably an app for that. You can probably you can probably get that. You can probably get the minutes trans the recording transcribed and then just edit it down. Yeah. I'm just trying That's to I'm just trying to help you out. Thank you, thank you. You know what I can do is let me start to do it and then you know sometimes like after a fact I'm like what did they say here? <laughs> I'll get it started and then we'll go from there and then if I um. You know, and Brian, you can send me the link to the to the recording, and I'll check it over or something. Okay, yeah, how does that sound? Courtney, as well as a, another point of um, reference as the yeah, yeah, no big deal. Okay, so you'll be okay. Good. I how are you doing, that. Kathy? Me? I'm fine. You know, I'm it's busy. I'm busy. I mean, amazing. You know, even though I'm not going to the senior center every day, but I've been really busy. Except I. I made a made a mistake and I was overzealous. I started running outside again. And the first time I started to do it, I was really overzealous and stretching. And I think I pulled a muscle in my leg, which- I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a good exercise though. Oh, I mean, I love to run. I used to run outside all the time for like about 20 years or so. So my, my, um, my, I was participating in a research study on, uh, old people, you know, muscle fitness for old people at the School of Kinesiology and it got halted. So that's why I decided to, mm. anyway, but I'm fine. You know, I piss and moan, but I'm really okay so far. Is everybody else okay? You've been seeing people? Everybody been mm -hmm. like, have contact with some people so you're not by yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Good. No, Corey? We have a very, <laughs> we have a very active household. Oh, oh, I know you do. Yeah, we have a we have a perfect three week old new baby and a three very annoying three year old. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kathy. Oh, <laughs> Just had to tell you. Oh <laughs> man, Kathy. Kathy knows the three year old. I know the three year old very well. Oh, that Kathy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a three week old. Oh my gosh. No. Um. Exciting. Congratulations. They made dinner tonight, which was great. Okay. <laughs> that's really nice um so it is 707 i think we should get the meeting underway okay, okay. um do we have an agenda for tonight i did i emailed it out uh i couldn't find it friday uh i can share it with you again um i'll send it right now oh there it is okay. <laughs> hold up i think i found it you got it I, was looking at the wrong I think email. it's included. It was a long email. Uh -huh. Lots of attachments. Yeah, there it is. 
It's on the second page. I had to put all that like Zoom stuff and the declaration page from the mayor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the second page is the agenda. Yeah. I didn't mean to be so cranky about the meeting, Brian. I no, no. It's, you're the clerk. You're supposed to be cranky about that stuff. Yeah. So you're doing your job. So oh. thank you for doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> agenda. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. No, but because I did have to check in with Laura because I uploaded the agenda la like on Wednesday and then I yeah. checked in with Laura and then I checked in with Pam and then I got a permission from the mayor. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, and so everybody's <laughs> on the same page and they good, gave me the city council protocols. Good. Mm -hmm. um, I just changed one thing from city council because we're not a city council meeting and we're not live streaming, but I'm going to upload it after so people can mm -hmm. watch it oh. and people can call in now as well for public, public com oh, comment yeah. period. So I don't see okay. anybody no. come, calling in right now. Um, uh -huh. So that's the only protocol I changed from the city council, uh, okay. the way they've been meeting. Okay. Let me right. double check. Okay. Where is the waiting room thing. Uh-huh. Eamon, where's the waiting room? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's in, he's looking at him. Where'd you get that? <laughs> where's the waiting room? Is that what you said? Yeah, oh, maybe that. Show manage. There it is. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have a waiting room because there's a password because I don't want to be Zoom bomb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's better. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah. Alan drinking a beer. <laughs> What kind of beer you got there, Alan? Bellhaven. Nice. Oh, I love that. Bellhaven. Oh. Um, I've been drinking a lot in the last month or so. Uh oh. Like more. <laughs> that's yeah. The the quarantine has has been yeah it hasn't been great for that. Huh. Or maybe it's maybe maybe that's the wrong approach. Maybe it, maybe I should say it has been great for that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So your your liver has been taking a beating. So uh, so everybody got the minutes from last month. Yeah. Yeah. Did everybody get a chance to review them? Mm -hmm. Any amendments or edits or anything to add? Me. Mm -hmm. okay. Um. Can somebody make a motion? Let's wait. Do we have a do we have a quorum? Let's see. We got Kathy, Rachel, three. Yep. We have a quorum. Oh, we do? Because I'm not part of this. No, I know. We have a quorum for the municipal board. And we. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. One, two. We do not have quorum for the um, ink board until Stephen Pedagorski gets here. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. we, we can move forward, though, with the, the meeting minutes. So I just need a motion to approve okay. the minutes as uh, mm -hmm. emailed out. So moved. Second, can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Last Aye. minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Great. Approved. Wow. Moving on, I tabled a bunch of stuff because when I talk to the mayor, it has to be emergency related in this meeting oh. about COVID-19 relief. Okay. And we're moving all the way down to the grant round committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we shared some of the um, updates with you that we've done. We've mm -hmm. we contacted the Arts Easy 19 grant mm -hmm. um, recipients who did not file for reimbursement yet. And um, the grant okay. committee has uh, offered a, an automatic six month extension um, okay. or the ability to do alternative live streaming of your event. Mm -hmm. um, or if so, if you need it to use the funds for COVID-19 relief and we'll okay. vote on that, uh, in the ink to make sure okay. that, you know, I, I reached out, but, uh, we'll vote that, vote that in the ink. And then the thing I did get a little pushback on was, um, from, we, well, we did the, the same, um, the same, ex Go ahead. The, the same extension was offered to the fall grant recipients as well. Right. Yes, and I was getting into that. So I got pushed back and we need to vote on this in this particular round. And I need to get also I need to get some kind of form of writing from the MCC 
to offer to change the, the, the contract basically because we've already funded everything and the auditor, the city auditor reached out to me and needs a vote from the meeting minutes and something in writing from the MCC to make sure that we are not, um, we're, we're staying in line with the contract and the confines of the money. So, Brian, you mean for um, if they decide to use it for relief? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, I I thought you mean I, it's not that they 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 have to use they want their money to use it for relief, not for the project itself. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh. So I want so right now what we're discussing is LCC FY20 mm -hmm. grant round where we funded you know mm -hmm. all the people and we already sent the checks to them. They already have the money. Okay. They would have to send oh, a final we report. Yeah. Because we're not doing reimbursement anymore. Right. Not for the fall round, and we're you know we're discussing how to change that for RTZ. Um, gotcha. Okay. RTZ. Okay. But right now, I would like to to have a motion to, from the municipal board uh, suggesting that it's okay for the FY20 LCC grantees to use the money for COVID nineteen relief if they need need it to need need it to be used for that. I have a question about the wording of this. What? Why the word strenuous? Uh, Could, should it be? Uh, are you talking? Are you looking at? Um, are you looking at the proposal for the for the 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 LCC one? Due to the current strenuous conditions. Hmm. That's an odd word there. I think. How, well, how, you don't think it's like a difficult time or when you can't maybe, have an maybe, exhibition yeah, or a show or sell tickets? It is a current, I mean, extenuating, extenuating. circumstances yeah. um, or unusual conditions. Let me see. Challenging? Or just, or just due to the current conditions, even just strike the word. I already sent the email out, word, so I can definitely change it. So I'll strike that word if you'd like. Um, okay. So, uh, so we uh, just to be clear, Brian. Um, the auditor needs this information, but the like Mina Kim and people at the MCC are okay with this kind of change being made, right? No, I have to. I have to get that in writing from them. I told Mina about it, but she hasn't. I, I, I think I'm pretty sure it'd be fine, but we have to make make sure. I've well, already, I you know. This didn't you come from them, huh? Yeah, you need no. to get something in writing too. Well, there's a parallel. There, there is, there is an, a, there is a parallel sort of granting stream from the state for, um, for artists affected, for self-employed artists affected by this. Yeah. Um, but it's, um, it's a new fund now. Which, yeah. So now, does so that prompts me to ask: Should we restrict this in any way to independent? to independent artists because that's what the that's what the MCC is requiring I think. Oh, well, so right now we're discussing today. we're discussing the money we've already granted and then the and I think in the yeah, next exactly. we'll discuss the money that we were going to possibly grant. So I I think what what Alan you're saying is that we should think about discussing that separately. So right now we've already sent a uh, I acted rashly and I sent a, a communication to all of our grant recipients saying they can either they get a six month extension and Mina is totally fine with that or they can use it for COVID-19 relief. And she responded to me that it's a really good idea. And I'm on like the MC, I'm doing this like talk tomorrow to all for the MCC. I'm like a guest talking about our, 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 our relief and I'm sure they're going to be fine with what we're doing. I just mm -hmm. need to get us to vote to say it's okay. So I can tell the auditor that the board right. has approved it, that we yeah. can, six months of extension, they can have it on Facebook live stream or that they can use the money if they, they, they need it for COVID-19 relief. And then I'm gonna to talk to Mina tomorrow mm -hmm. about some kind of thing in writing saying it's, just, it's fine as well. Okay. That's where I'm yeah, at. Just get it in writing, that's good, Brian. This good. is for the fall LCC round and then we can talk about next, talking about the funds mm -hmm. that we can reallocate from RTZ 2020 to a COVID-19 relief fund. So mm -hmm. that's what I need now, just so it satisfies the auditor. Mm -hmm. And then move forward, I'll tell Mina that we all talked about it. And, and if you guys think that's right, we can have a discussion and just please discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So it means, Brian, that any of the people from our fall fund, whether they're a group or an individual artist, can all, they all, they, it's the same benefit for everybody, correct? That's how we, yeah, we just put it as grant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I shared the email I sent out to Arts Easy 19 with Mina, and she thought it was a really good idea, and they actually are going to probably copy the same thing. They just haven't mm -hmm. ha had it passed yet. Right. But so I, I'm going to talk to her about it further. Go ahead, Rachel. I'm sorry. But basically what we're doing now is like dotting our I's and crossing our T's and like mm -hmm. we're not voting on we've already done the thing we've done we just need to make sure we're doing it in a kosher yes. way i didn't check in the, in the right way because i'm getting you know I, I wanted to move forward because i thought it was right and i should have probably yeah. checked okay. with the auditor first or had a board meeting but you know so, i wanted a quick response and we were meeting and i felt like i had a good enough you know mm -hmm. idea or support from the grants committee to move forward Okay. And maybe I was a little too rash, but we'll go forward. I think there's going to be support. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So this think, came from, the, this all came from the grants committee. Okay. To start. Okay. Yeah, we're in the grant, grant committee. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Freeman, Danielle, and Rachel. Yeah. And Esther, I think, was part of the early conversations around this too. And then she oh. had to stop attending. Yeah. What did she do? <laughs> My God. I think like month or something. When? Like this week or something. Ay, yeah, 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 caramba. <laughs> God. Um, all right, so Brian, what does the motion need to be? Well, wait, hold on. The only thing we need to consider is if there is like, for instance, the what's the, the music festival at Smith? I don't know if, I don't even know if they're a recipient. Lyra. 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 Uh -huh. If they're going to, like, if they just cancel, period, which is likely. Uh -huh. it, do we want to keep? Do we want to keep those monies for individual artists who might need the money more? Well, but they. But didn't we already give them um, the money? Right. Yeah, they already have the money. You said yeah, they got. Yeah. Alan, you can't. But they have to give it back. If it were a traditional uh -huh. grant round, they right. would give back unused funds. I'm personally of the belief that like everyone is struggling right now and yeah yeah like everyone a has a need for these funds everyone is going to have lost income and they probably spent money on that already right um, regardless hmm. I wonder how much was the grant for what grant to Lyra probably like 250 bucks yeah, okay. Correctly. I was gonna I was gonna say if it was a more substantial amount, we might reach out to them and just give them the extra go ahead to distribute it among staff or any gig workers that they were planning to hire to work the event. But maybe that would be something to consider if we're in this situation again in the fall. Yeah. It may yeah. be money they've already spent on on pre on preseason things. So mm -hmm. no, I think it's fine. It's none of these grants are none of these grants are so large that we really need to worry about it, I don't think. Mm-hmm. And for the most and and for the most part, we, we can't just we can't tell what of the monies we grant goes to people like it all goes to somebody doing something in the right, arts. Right. So, um I so, think we're here to support culture and in mm -hmm. any way we can, whether it is a cultural event or an organization mm -hmm. or an individual right. artist, okay. we are supporting culture in any way we can and either way. Okay. That makes sense. So that's so, how to me is like if you can't if you're a, a cultural if you're an artist and you can't afford to like pay your utility bill this month, you know, you're gonna I don't know. I just that's that's how I'm thinking right now. As um I'm in a lucky position to still have a job and you know, even though our our, our nonprofit is 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 very reliant on sponsorship and ticket sales, mm -hmm. which is we'll, we'll talk about yeah. for the you know next next yeah. financial year is there's a lot of people that are, that's all their primary income is. And their other income is probably working in a restaurant. A lot of people work oh, God, yeah. jobs and like that's two incomes that are gone. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
So do we have a, a vote? Does, does somebody want to again give a give a vote? So are we made a, for there has to be a motion. Four. Yeah. And there can be more discussion. I just, you know, that's how I'm mm -hmm. feeling right now. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us what the motion needs to be for the auditors? Uh, uh, well, yeah. I just think that motion should be framed in a way that we would like to extend a six month extension. Um, okay. Exactly how we wrote it, worded the email, a six month extension and that we, you know, it's like we're, we're just changing the guidelines after the fact, right? That's how I'm looking at it is that we have got, there's like LCC guidelines and then there's local guidelines that we can, we can, we can do it any way we want. And then we're just, you know, we're, we're amending the guidelines to say that due to the current circumstances, mm -hmm. if, if one of our grantees needs to use the, work, the, the money for COVID-19 relief or they need a six month mm -hmm. extension or they need to go on Facebook Live to have their performance that, Okay. That's so, okay. I don't know how so what you're okay. saying is that we'd like a six month uh, extension, or if they they want to um, continue with with their art event or art something, they need to to be able to uh, virtually show it on the Facebook um, live, right? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. They yeah. Need to be immediately yeah. qualified or it can be immediately reallocated for emergency relief. Yeah, I mean, this is so broad. So mm -hmm. you really give people yeah, right. a lot of options. They, they do. do still need to fill out a report. Mm -hmm. They should. On, right. on the same schedule, but they just need to indicate which of these options they, they did. And I think a lot of people are gonna use it for cultural events to, to, uh, because I haven't heard back from anybody that's using it for COVID-19 relief. Okay, so far. Mm -hmm. and we, so, yeah. but the, having the option and like showing our support for the artistic community mm -hmm. in this way, I think mm -hmm. it, is really important right now. So, so Brian, do they have to let you know which one they want within a, a time frame? Yeah, if they're gonna use the money for COVID-19 relief, I would say like they, whatever they use the money for, they're gonna have to send me a report within two weeks. Okay. So either if they like stay with their current schedule and then they live, they Facebook, they like live stream it to a public audience mm -hmm. or if they, you know, it's, it's usually we get the final report after they have the event. Okay. It's, it's similar like to the reimbursement kind of schedule that we used to operate under, but it's yeah. just sending a final report because they already have the money. Okay. All right. Oh, Stephen. And then, or if they if they up. don't do that, they're going to tell you that they'd like the six month extension, so you can keep track of who's got the six month extension. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, or everybody just gets a six month extension, so they just get another six months. Hey, mm -hmm. Stephen. Stephen hey, Bakrisky hey. joined us. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hey, Steve. So, shall I move? Can I move? Yeah, may, please make a motion, Steve. Okay. I'll just get motion Steve to I'll... motion to amend our grant guidelines to extend um, deadlines for six months for existing grant recipients, allow them to reallocate already awarded grant funds for emergency relief, and allow them flex the flexibility to complete their project online if they want to. Within six months. Oops, sorry. Is it within six months? Is that our I know months. it would whenever it's in the timeline that they said they a would six do. month extension yeah, six month deadline it would be not it wouldn't be December 31st it would be June 30th 2021 is when they get to, to finally complete their project mm -hmm. okay can we change those words well you can uh, you can discuss mm -hmm. what do you suggest or right, well we can well she made a motion so we gotta have a second and then we gotta Seconded. vote on it. okay seconded Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <laughs> I like the thumbs up there. Nice. You good? Everybody all in favor? We're good? Amen? All right. Thank you. All right. So. Okay. Um, Rachel or Freeman and Danielle, you guys want to talk about the other 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 stuff we're doing with COVID nineteen relief? Okay. Sure. 
You want to, Rachel, you did a great job with the guidelines. I didn't get to reply yet, but I don't know if you want to maybe start there or. Yeah, um, well, so, uh, so I guess what we just voted on were past recipients of our grant uh, funding. What we're talking about now is the, what in the past has been the Arts Easy grant round, typically launched this month and due in May. Um, the, what has been discussed here is transforming this arts round to also be centered on COVID relief for artists and art producers in our community. Um, so the idea is that they are not applying for a project as they have in the past, but instead applying because they are a contributor to the cultural vitality of Northampton, Florence and Leeds, and because they are at a loss of their typical income as a result of COVID-19. Um, we, the other idea is to get these funds to the eligible applicants as quickly as possible. So rather than having it be a project that requires receipts and a return, a payout at the end of the project period, these would be grants issued immediately after our meeting next month. Um, and so in addition to our own funds that we would be distributing through our, our grant process, we will simultaneously be having a GoFundMe campaign so that other people in the community can contribute to this fund. And then we would just be able to issue more of these emer emergency relief funds to more eligible applicants. Mm -hmm. um, so the we have a couple documents that um, Brian shared and that have been edited a bit since. Mm -hmm. um, one is the the online application for this round, which is a much more simple version of our our application round because the idea is that it shouldn't take very long, um, and that we you know it's to remove as many barriers as possible. Um, so it really predominantly focuses on the person or organization's cult, you know, c contribution to the cultural vitality of our community and their direct need for these funds. And they can explain their need in any, in any way, a loss of income, loss of their main job, um, canceled events, things like that. Um, and then we also have a document that explains um, or that shows suggested text to go on the GoFundMe page. So that would be the public facing component where anyone can share this via Facebook, via email. Um, and it's a, a wide call for other people to, to contribute to this fund. Um, and when uh, yeah, Danielle and Freeman, do you want to add anything? So we were talking, we, this, a lot of this came from the artist survey that went out. Um, and some people responded that their immediate need was cash because, you know, they're, they're losing income mm -hmm. due to this. And then a lot of people also said that they were looking to give back in other more creative ways. Like they were still maintaining projects or, or maybe they weren't financially impacted, but they wanted to support the arts community in some way. So part of what's going to happen with the, the form that we're doing to, for the application form, there are going to be two pathways. One pathway is going to be for people to apply for emergency relief funding. And the other pathway is like, I want to find a way to be involved and support the arts somehow. And that's where we link to the GoFundMe. And that will go to everyone who filled out our um, survey. I think we had like 74 responses and Brian shared those results with everyone. So definitely take a look. Um, if you're curious about how people are doing, but everything that we did was really kind of in indirect response to that that survey that came out. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that um, we wanted to add. The, the other reason for the GoFundMe was because I believe we're now looking at a $10,000 allocation and Brian, you can definitely 
speak more to the details on that, but we're, we're struggling with the, the number that we wanted to give, like we wanted it to be significant, but we also wanted to hit as many people as possible. So part of the logic behind the GoFundMe was to make sure that we could give substantial grant amounts. Like we didn't think hundred dollars would go far enough for people. Um, and we're going to wait to figure out what the amount is once we see the number of applications that come in and once we see the number that comes in through the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. So originally we were talking about 20,000, but then after our last Zoom meeting, I thought about how in the past we've always done reimbursement grants through RTZ and how that worked well with cash flow with our event schedule and how we, we obtain funds. So, and I was thinking that, you know, really gung-ho about $20,000, but then that's going to leave us a little bit um, vulnerable in mm -hmm. um, the beginning of FY21, which starts in July. And I don't know if we're going to have trans performance yet. And there's a lot of uh, variables. So by funding two $20,000 grant rounds, basically in the same year, it's going to be really difficult for us yeah. to pay for staff if we do have to come back online event-wise for four Sundays and things like that. Because right now we're looking at no summer concert series, no trans performance. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, first night, hopefully we're going to, we were, we were working on all of those and we have plans, but I don't know if there's going to be a public component in which we'll be able to a fundraise from a local business community has been really, really um, hurt. And then secondly, get people to come out to a public event or if you, even we can have a public event that we can sell tickets to. Right. So then, you know, I made that realization this morning and I emailed the grant committee about having us contribute $10,000 that will be available right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully we can do a really good job getting the word out about GoFundMe. Um, through all of our channels and people share it and understand the need for that. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we can up to like, I'm hoping we can raise $20,000 on GoFundMe in a month. Yeah, um, But, uh, and then the idea you... is whatever pool we get um, and how many applicants we deem that are eligible, I just like to split the pool up. You know, if we end up with $20,000, we end up with 50 applicants, we just split that $20,000 and we send everybody a check for whatever each equal amount is. Okay. Uh, Good question. Okay, that's all equal. Okay. So we're going to run the fundraiser for GoFundMe uh, concurrently with the same time as the application, and they'll both end at the same day. And then the grant committee, along with anybody from the board who would like to be um, determining eligibility for this relief fund, is invited to see who's eligible. And then we'll just divide up, you know the $10,000 plus whatever we fundraise from the GoFundMe okay. uh, and the checks and then send those to the eligible applicants within two to five weeks. I think I have it on the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the proposal that the grant committee put together, the timeline, the timeline is there. Yeah. Yes, Kathy. Um, so, so everybody gets funded no matter any, whether they, their, their, their grant needs uh, whatever they get funded doesn't matter the quality or anything they get funded is that what you're saying yeah there's no there's no artistic integrity it's okay you have you contributed to the to, you know culture in our area in the last three years or a lot you know there's a couple questions that we shared with you yeah. and okay. everybody gets the same amount um so they don't have to be a northampton resident um yeah. I, because it's art easy it's like we don't well normally there that's not a requirement Okay, um, for our arts grant rounds, the requirement for LCC is they have to be a Massachusetts resident for our LCC grant round in the fall. But this is RTZ and it's a COVID-19 relief fund. Um, oh, it could be anybody from anywhere. That has contributed to Northampton, Florence and Leeds cultural you, community. So it could be somebody from West Hampton that is consistently has shows here or a music musician that's from Greenfield that consistently has shows here and has participated and it was, you know, things like that, so. Did they document what they've done in Northampton as part of there or not? Yeah, it's part of the proposal that we shared with everybody. You can see the questions that we're gonna be asking people. Okay, right. And so eligibility is definitely a factor. Like the, the aim is to get all eligible applicants funding, but mm -hmm. if somebody applies and they are, an artist from Southampton who's never done a show in mm. Northampton, Florence or Leeds, then that that may not right. be an applicable mm -hmm. grantee. Gotcha. Okay. 
All so, right. Definitely not an automatic yes. The answer, it's either going to be a yes or a no. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit less um, like discussion and subjectivity when it comes to the evaluation process, mm -hmm. but it'll just be a yes or a no. Okay. Thank you. We also, there's something on the state website about, I, I forget how they define it, but, but it's, it's also important that these grants go to individual artists that don't have other jobs. A lot of our grantees, myself included, have jobs at the, at the big edu educational institutions in the area. There's no reason, I mean, I, I would qualify for this as is, mm -hmm. except I still have my job at Smith and that money should not go to somebody like me. It should go to somebody that's working you know, it should go to somebody that's waiting tables and doing, you know, and doing their art and, you know, and taking gigs and stuff but, like that. Yeah. And that, but that's hard because it's all means, you know, it's on means and I don't know how, yeah, and some, I depend on the individual artists, how, what are they going to say and, and if putting in for things? Well, that's why we have the two pathways. Okay. So okay. when, when this sort, when this sort of form goes out, right? Like, if you're a grant recipient, you'll get this email that says that you can apply for emergency relief, but like, um, it's kind of an honor system. Like I would trust that you wouldn't necessarily, that you wouldn't actually apply for it. And that there's going to be a link that says not like, are you not negatively impacted? Do you want to help? Do you want to give back in some way? And here's this link for you to actually maybe go to the GoFundMe and give 10 or $15. Okay. Um, I think we can, I think we can trust people. I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll get the, I don't know. These I mean, applications are talking for very hard job. time for people. And so, I mean, like, this would be the period of time or like possibly circumstances where people might, you know, if you're, if you really like, you know, if something, you know, if omitting a little bit is going to um, help you out and you're that desperate. Mm. Um, I second what Danielle, I think people, you know, this is a really hard time for everybody. And I think like, People like Alan, you're not going to apply to this grant because you no. know you you're you you're fed and you have a job and you're getting paid still, mm -hmm. and you're an artist that you know respects other artists. So, um, and maybe that's good information to include, like the uniqueness yeah. of this situation, and you know that we hope that you will really honorably, um, you know, if then if you have a real need to apply, it won't be so much money anyway. Um, mm. you know, just ask people to be honorable about their applications. If they have the need, apply. If not, yeah, I think that's a good point because uh, the the barriers are very low, and I think um, mm. uh, I hear the point that like if you just read the criteria, that would actually apply to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So that is a good place where we can. I think the we might need to link to the GoFundMe in a few different places mm -hmm. just or or like like add a line of text that kind of redirects people They're like you know if you don't have significant need at this time like consider supporting the campaign mm -hmm. instead if you have another full-time job <laughs> that has been right. on a <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we can get into details about people like where people have their support um, yeah. but yeah. One of the questions is, is that what, you know, what part of your income has been, what type of revenue are eligible list has lost income as part of this application? And it's pretty extensive. I think, uh, are you on the MCC website? Can no, we're not. I'm on the, the, the document that I sent to everybody, mm -hmm. the COVID-19 emergency relief application. Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, what types of revenue, you know, are lost? It's, you know, it, it's, people will tell and they have a narrative and, okay. and hopefully we can, you know, find the most eligible applicants that need it the most. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, from sending the survey out to everybody, I feel like people are, were very candid in that survey, mm -hmm. um, whether they had means or not had means and what was necessary and, so I'm hoping that we're going to get the same type of narrative by this application of people mm -hmm. that really need it. So, um, and I believe in our community. I really, you know, our community is really mm -hmm. strong and uh, I think all of us add to it. And I think that, you know, I don't, I've never feel, felt like I've been duped um, 
before or that I've been, you know, you, you know, that we've been cheated or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And us being open and, 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 uh, being more open than closed, I think is, is also mm. sends a good message. I think, I think it's important to, to mm -hmm. note that the responses to the artist survey, in addition to talking about the need for COVID relief, um, there was a lot of appreciation for us asking. Mm -hmm. And it, it says something about the character of the people who are likely to be applying for this fund and who's going to be hearing about this funding. And I mean, I think, um, you know, that was a fairly, that made a real impression on me that, that people were, were glad to be asked, mm -hmm. appreciated that they, they, they were very forthcoming. If you read the, you know, if you read the survey responses mm. um, and I think, you know, that I think Danielle is right and, and Rachel is right. And, Mm -hmm. And I think Ellen's comment is, you know, there's no reason not to to give them every opportunity to to decide that this is not really necessary for me. Mm -hmm. But I think in general, I think we're going to get a pool of people who are probably quite deserving. Yeah. And need the funds. And needing, yeah. And I think you also have to accept that you might get a couple that we look at and go, they probably don't need it. But you know, that's part of the cost of reaching all the people who do need it. Right. Yeah. I like the beginning of it. You have all those questions or, you know, it's like the, the, the questions that people would be asking. Mm -hmm. um, you've got them answered right there at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe in the, the, you know, the experience of this board to determine, you know, who's eligible and who's not. We've, we've been doing it for we've been doing it for a long time so i think we're 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 the right people to be doing this and we'll make we'll make the right we'll make the best decision we can with the information we have and right. we can support this you know our 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 community the best we can right now mm -hmm. um any more discussion about this proposal to reallocate arts ez funds ten thousand dollars towards a COVID-19 relief fund mm -hmm. so it's going to be the ten thousand plus any of the GoFundMe funds that come in correct okay, okay. okay. motion to <laughs> implement a GoFundMe page for emergency COVID relief Motion to move and move $10,000 of what would have been spring easy grants to emergency relief and implement the new guidelines as drafted in the document that Brian sent around, knowing that the grants committee might actually edit it to be a little bit more concise. Um, and we can send it out to the whole group for email approval later. Seconded. <laughs> You mean, Brian, this is an ink vote or a municipal vote? Wow. Uh, it's an ink vote for this particular one. Um, yeah. we, have, we have quorum for ink as well, but I like to include everybody when we're mm. discussing this stuff. So you're definitely part of this, Stephen. This vote. Okay. Then does an ink person need to make the motion? Mm. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So it's Kathy, Kathy, and Steven are the representatives of the Inc. Uh, quorum right now. Okay. Right. Okay. So are we, do we have we have we have a pass? We have passed this motion. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we voted. I think I moved. I'm not sure it was seconded. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Everybody vote. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody good. All right. Good. Aye. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I don't know how to do those emo the emoticons in my thing, so I'll work on that, I guess. It's just the reaction to the bottom. The bottom. Oh, oh my God. Ah, there we go. There we go. Oh, oh reactions. Woo! Oh, I see the reaction. Yay! I know how to push a button right. <laughs> All right, I just figured out how to put Columbia as my background. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, oh yeah, somebody was saying I, I, I want that. <laughs> um, so going down, so that's good. We already got into the RTZ thing. So uh, that's really great. 
we also need to vote on the RTZ19 extension, the ink board. So if you could, can somebody make from the ink board make the same kind of motion that Danielle made for the LCC. Okay. Um, so six automatic six month extension for RTZ2019. They can have it on live stream and Facebook, or they can just use the funds for our, uh, for COVID-19 relief. Okay, I make that motion. Steven, do you second? I'll second. 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 All in favor? Aye. All right, great. Kathy Murray? Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, COVID-19 protective mask fund thing that I did on Facebook, we raised more than we asked for. Um, I worked with my girlfriend who's a nurse practitioner at Bay State. She mm -hmm. had a lot of her doctor friends and international friends donate. So I'm getting, uh, I got 50 masks already as a sample because we got them sent to us before. Um, we haven't paid for them yet at all. The, the company is just sending them all to us and we're going to receive them all before I even send payment to them. But we're going to end up with 10,000 masks. I'm getting my first shipment of 2,000 on Thursday by the tracking number. Wow. Um, and, and then what kind did you get? They're the um, surgical masks that are made of polypropylene. Okay. And we paid way under market right now. Um, we okay. paid 50 point, like half a euro per mask. Okay. Um, okay. Because it's my girlfriend's, like uh, her sister's family in okay. Spain is, okay. they did it. And they just, they have two factories doing um, PPE for all of Spain. In Brazil? Extra. No, they're in Spain. Okay. Sure. Some of our families in Colombia, some of us in Spain, but they have, um, they're, they, they usually run leather factories and make like purses and stuff, right. like Louis Vuitton and stuff. So, but they. So, so are all <laughs> these masks going to Bay State or some of them? The first batch. And then I'm going to, going to ask to, for more to and raise more money to bring them to other places. Cause that was the first place that we found that was really had a, a dearth and they're like the, they're, they are the, like the largest in the area that are doing the most, they have the most COVID patients. They have yeah, the yeah, and Cooley Dick actually is doing, I'm on their ethics committee and things are, are okay there so far. But the person you should contact, I'll get you the name of the person, the case management person, um, yeah. at Cooley Dick if you have questions with the same thing. I'll definitely connect with you for Cooley Dickinson. Yeah, that would be great. Good. Yeah, um, the mask stuff, it's, it's a bet, you know, it's, it gets really complicated and it's better, you know, yeah to get the right things, what people need. Even, even wanna, um, if they need any at the survival center. Well, that, those are different, but the surgical masks, they can be used at, in um, more so in medical set, settings. Mm -hmm. The survival center, they, there's a lot of um, mask, mask making that they would need. Yeah, this yeah, is okay. the specific kinds of masks are, are not the kind that need to be, you know, for, the basic, you, you know, people. These are mm -hmm. people who are doing suctioning and things like that. So, mm -hmm. it's it's more protective pr pr equipment for hospital staff exactly. and doctors and things. How like much that. was this, Brian? Uh, the total is fifty four hundred for ten thousand masks. Um, we raised a little bit more than that. I think almost fifty six hundred. So I'm okay. going to use the extra that we raised to go towards the next uh, batch of masks mm -hmm. that I'll be able to figure out what Cooley Dick needs. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys seen it on social media, but um, every time a COVID patient leaves Bay State, um, yeah. they play the Rocky song, yeah. and then all of the everybody lines up that's on hand, and they like get clap. It's pretty amazing. No, I can believe it. Yeah, and, there's uh, a lot more uh, marginalized people in that area compared to Northampton. Yeah, and they they just I think they I don't even know what the numbers are there, but it's they have like four floors of COVID patients. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, pretty intense. On another social media note, I don't know if you guys watch what Cr John Krasinski is doing on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. good news. That's mm -hmm. pretty good too. Mm -hmm. um, so we did, we talked about everything we needed to talk about. We got all the votes. I really appreciate everybody's time. Does anybody have any new updates or some new business to discuss? Mm -hmm. Just a question about the mass things. Are you going to be publicizing it to make a, in terms of good things that the Arts Council is doing or is this quiet? The mask, the mask up. Yeah, the, the mask of Bay State. I, you know, I'll have, uh, we'll draft up a, a I can't rate? say it's for Bay State. That's the thing. We were in direct contact with them. Mm. And I wanted this, like, we can say we donated to them, but we can't say that they're involved or like anything like that. So we can just say we donated the mask to Bay State. We, we didn't fundraise for Bay State. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was told by the, the administrator at Bay State because I was in direct contact with her. 
Okay. Um, so I believe I included a line about other efforts that we've been organizing in the press release about the emergency relief grant. So the headline is that we're starting this emergency relief grant and asking the public to pitch in if they're able. And then the sort of at the end, it's like, if, here are some other things that we've been working on, including the survey, including the mask fundraiser, and like links to get involved, um, and then inviting folks to give us suggestions and, and, mm -hmm. and get in touch if they want to be involved. Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd actually be really fun, to, you know, because humor is so helpful, people to design masks and <laughs> do some kind of hardy mask. I just think something like that would be great. To have. Like how Freeman came on the call, like something like that. Like, yeah. Can we, should we have like a mask, like, uh, we talk about maybe like a, like a mask fashion show on Zoom yeah. or something? Well, I think, you know, there was some great mask on something that I just saw. I think, I don't, I mean, I get so much stuff on all this stuff from all my medical things, but there was some very fascinating masks. There was even one that somebody sent me they made out of um, um, men's um, real Speedo uh, British shorts. They made a mask with using the British flag with using Speedo shorts, you know, bathing wow. suits. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i mean i'm just you know union jack mask that's what yeah, we all need yeah yeah you saw that huh? <laughs> that was great <laughs> so we should have a we should have categories then there should be the best best mask in general best plague doctor mask you know the yeah people, right right the carnival right. plague doctor mask that's a that's a particularly uh, well, that would be a Camus oh, mask <laughs> yeah right from wow. back in the well there's a clear winner in this meeting yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's a Zoom masquerade, is that what you're saying? No, yeah, Zoom masquerade. <laughs> so Brian. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, we have some competition here. <laughs> Brian. Yes. How so how close are we to to writing off the summer events? And oh. if if we do get to that point do we simply look ahead to first night and concentrate our efforts there? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful about trans performance. Really? Okay. And what I'm doing with the production staff, we have a meeting tomorrow, um, is focusing on the idea that we're going to be live streaming some, a couple concerts in July from Memorial Hall. Mm -hmm. And if the possibility that if it opens up and we can go into Pulaski Park, Pulaski Park is right there. So we can just, mm -hmm. it'll be an easy pivot to take all of our production efforts. And it's probably going to be acoustic, which is fine. And we can just, you know, mm -hmm. all of our equipment is in, is in Memorial Hall already. And we can just set up our, the whole show on the stage in Pulaski Park. That's where I do. So we're going to be live streaming some summer park, park series. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to go with three, but probably mostly acoustic because of the way Memorial Hall sounds. Um, and, you know, we're going to start, you know, we're going to look for, try to get some sponsorship for it. I don't know how, how successful it will be right. when we use our, our advertising to get people to watch it. Uh -huh. um, and then I, I'm hopeful about, you know, we're not going to do the public arts festival because there's no way to do like paint stuff without mm -hmm. people around. And mm -hmm. I talked to MCC about having our grant extended. I'm sure they're going to figure that out. Now, when you when you do the concerts in Memorial Hall, it's in that big atrium in the front. Yeah, exactly. We have we already have first night there. We've done we've we've done stuff in there already, and we're okay. just gonna practice social distancing. Probably gonna be a solo artist. Maybe go ahead, Danielle. Oh no, finish, finish. Oh yeah, that you know we're thinking about like an acoustic solo artist or maybe a duo at at most. Okay. Um, and then be able to like if we need to pivot it to outside is what mm -hmm. our the idea is right now. But we're gonna come with more ideas tomorrow. We'll have like a okay. two or three hour Zoom production meeting tomorrow to talk about more stuff. It's, yeah, go ahead. We already opened up first night applications and please tell everybody to apply. So we're definitely looking forward to having first night still. Okay. So I had two questions. One about Cinema Northampton. Yeah. I wondered if there would be any way for us to do drive-in movies. Mm -hmm. We've been discussing it. Yeah. If there's like, I don't know if we could use the parking lot at Holly Street or if there's any other venue that we could possibly use that we could still charge people or that and that we could potentially charge people to, as a fundraiser and we could say it's like going to Artist Relief or it's going to support, you know, our, our programming. I think sure. people would be happy to do like five or ten dollars a car. It could be sliding scale, yeah. donation based. All of our um, efforts have been um, not given permission by the mayor's office. 
So oh, we okay. had some ideas of, uh, my idea was to use the huge parking lot on King Street. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. the old Honda dealership that's right next to the Amazing. bike. Yeah. yeah. But oh, yeah. The, the mayor doesn't want anybody. Um, I know there's been some like indie shows. I know like um, Topsy from And the Kids and Maldivisa did kind of like a drive-in show that was like socially distanced and I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. And myself and Al Williams and Dylan from, uh, Al Williams from NC, uh, North and Open Media and then Dylan have been, we've been texting each other ideas and then we've mm-hmm. been just running up against uh, the mayor not giving us permission. So maybe by the summer, if things ease up a little bit, then maybe you can ask again. I think that would be yeah. awesome. I'll have, I have a department head meeting um, next Thursday, not this upcoming Thursday, and I'll have some more details hopefully by then, but probably not. I'm thinking like I won't know anything really until the middle of May or that first deadline where the, where the school. So, um, you know, we are going in good faith and planning and like getting, you know, personnel and like looking at stuff awesome. for the summer. But, you know, we're, I'm trying to have like, you know, have it be able to be live streamed again trying to do two things and i know how to do that with trans performance so i'm just hoping that like by the end of august we can have mm. something at look park yeah um it's it's really scary i mean our, the uh, jazz festival had a meeting and we have like a bunch of people who are part of um the advisory board and sean farley and a number of people mm-hmm. were there and it, it's really sobering in terms of um you know even things in the fall are people going to be a, a, a really up for getting close to people being close to people and you know if there's a second sort of wave of of yeah. anything it, it really is pretty and it, how many businesses that's the other thing in northampton how many yeah. things are still going to be open after all this in terms of um we're you know getting support from any of our businesses it's uh yeah we don't know that's the biggest thing about i think what everybody we're having everybody in the world's having a problem with everything yeah. is, is on un, the unknown is always the scariest right for yeah. everybody mm. so I, I had another question which are we are we a 501c3 so, Inc. is Inc. is yeah are we eligible to apply for grants mm-hmm. yeah. okay is that something that you need help with or well, I, don't, I just haven't seen anything that most of the grants I've seen are for, you know, for 500 plus employees. I just saw the first one for, <laughs> for four profits with under 50 employees. Wow. Um, yeah. So we, we could, uh, you know, normally we, I don't like to compete with other, mm-hmm. other cultural facilities in our town for grant funds because, mm-hmm. you know, there's like, there's a lot of different other arts nonprofits. Mm. No, a lot of them are geographically like a lot of grants are geographically like national grants and things like that um mm-hmm. but we do apply for grants from the community foundation for programming um mm. into the schools and mm. for the north for, to northampton education foundation as well mm. but yeah. if, you, if you find any grants that you think will fit our particular um organization our 51c3 and what we do i would love to look forward to it but we're like a really interesting organization we throw mm. events and we give money out yeah you're um the ink is a cultural investment portfolio grantee Correct. right yep. so um so you're eligible to apply for their relief funds mcc has a set of relief funds that's only for portfolio and and gateway grantees yep and, so um isn't it just, they're just giving us the money without but with less hoops it's like fifty five hundred dollars oh yeah do you get it without the application yeah Okay, so well, well, well I already did all the hoops. I do it as soon as they send it out, like yeah. with this data arts project thing, and mm-hmm. we're already. But I, if I see if you if you have an idea of if there's a new grant, just send me that link. No, that's the one I'm talking about. But that's significant. That's like a really great. Yeah, but yeah. like both are significant. Having that ongoing grant funding and then being applicable for for more. So, so did, would, for the minutes, what the the you said cultural investment portfolio and what's something else? Are you saying there's a gr- another grant fund besides that? Because we're not we're not a gateway city. So no, you're not you're not gateway. You're a portfolio. Yeah, but there's is there another relief? Hold on. The the relief funds that they made available were only for the portfolio and the gateway designated. Right. So the, the people that are past the first project stage of Gateway is just their onboarding program to become portfolio. Mm. 
I just want just to add, just to let you know in terms of the community foundation, um, all their grants are now COVID related that because the um, jazz festival had applied and they, we were told that it, they're not going to be, you know, we won't be getting any money from them because it's not COVID related. They're, they're all their grants now, um, they're trying to make them all related to COVID. You should make it related to COVID. Say mm -hmm. like all of your sponsorships with one of your main revenue sources are going to be at odds because you don't have any support from the local business community that are affected by COVID. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's an idea. Yeah. Um, but uh, Danielle, if you have any uh, like ideas of like grants that fit that our organization, I'd be more than happy to work with you to, to apply to those. Identifying new revenue sources will be really important in the next for the next year. Mm -hmm. Can't have yeah. the large marquee events that we do. Mm. Um, how's we how you guys ready to wrap it up? Um, well, just a quick plug. I, it sounds like we might be launching uh, tomorrow, right? The GoFundMe and the application. I'm going to do the best I can. I have a lot of Zoom meetings tomorrow, but I'm going to say, I'm going to get up early and, and get, try to get everything together. And I think we need some input on the Google form for the application. Mm -hmm. So I think tomorrow will be difficult. I think the day after will be better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, for our purposes, it's, it's within the 24 to 48 hour period of it being launched. And I uh, just wanted to encourage all board members to contribute if, mm -hmm. if it's possible. Yep. Um, because if we all, you know, if we all make a contribution, that's going to turn into quite a few more grants to distribute. And, um, and if you do can uh, contribute, if you could also share it either via social media or email that goes a, a really, long way and uh yeah i would just love to see it be as successful as possible i'm sure we all do if you have any millionaire or billionaire friends that are very liberal with their, their yeah. philanthropic giving yeah. please yeah. share with them you tell people if they get their um for some people if they get tax relief or whatever you know the, the money that um it, trump is talking about they can give some of their money to the arts you know whatever oh, money yeah. yeah. redistribute your tax relief check yeah. if you don't need it yeah mm -hmm. If it ever arrives. Mm. Ha, yeah, right. I, I hear they're supposed to arrive tomorrow if you Mine, did direct Mine's deposit. already pending. I'm already, actually, my, like, my account's about to get deposited, so it's, they're on their way. Really? Yeah. And when you do get your relief check, you should head over to Amherst Cinema and, and stream a movie online. <laughs> <Treat yourself. laughs> That's a good idea. And there's some great movies. I've been hearing getting a lot of friends saying, get the movies. I've, awesome. been, I've been watching them with my friends at the same time and then we do a zoom after so we're trying to recreate it good one that's a good one <laughs> how's uh, Amherst cinema doing how's things going you know uh, it okay um i mean that it's a funny it's a funny thing having these conversations because i don't know any arts organization with a padded budget you know like every arts organization Ooh. is created so you know there just isn't enough funding for the arts and every like arts organization mm -hmm. has like such a trim budget mm -hmm. where to go without income that you're usually expecting can um mm -hmm. you know it's definitely tough but we're making the most of all the stimulus package offers mm -hmm. that we can um we're applying for every grant we can we're uh, and honestly public sp support has been the biggest uh the biggest support, just people's donations and memberships, which thank you. I know a lot of you renewed mm -hmm. your memberships recently. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Cause that, those funds are, are immediate. Whereas even, even the best grants um, are months out, you know, and uh, it's, it's very, we, we got one relief grant through like um, an art house theater okay. um, program, but um, yeah, it's, it's tricky, but we're trying to do everything we can to reopen successfully. And um, the cinema owns the building. So that, that's a big help that, that we're not paying. Uh, we're without like a very significant fixed expense. So that, that definitely helps. Oh, good. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. So, so um, 
Esther's name came up earlier and uh, at, our, at our last subcommittee meeting, we talked about a little bit about uh, missing her mm -hmm. presence and I, I wrote to her. So this is what she wrote back to me a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Nice to hear from you. I'm well feeling lucky that we really have everything we need to be comfortable in these unprecedented and unexpected times. Still a few weeks away from my due date, spending mm -hmm. lots of time with Solomon, enjoying the chair in our backyard when mm -hmm. it's not raining or too windy. Uh, I've enjoyed seeing the proactive response from the Arts Council. It makes me feel good about the time I've invested. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you and the committee for your hard work. Great. Um, she sounds like she's doing okay. And Brian, I, I wanted to know how the ravioli came out. I mean, I saw them. They looked beautiful. <laughs> My first try. They were a little thick. They were yeah. Little thick. Mm. We're going to take another gonna another stab at it. We're okay. It was not bad for my first ravioli. Yeah, they look beautiful. Thanks. Oh, how come we didn't see any pictures of them? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll, I'll text one to you, Kathy. Okay. I did make a really good, like, super chocolatey, gooey, like, kind of like, kind of, uh, you know, like one of those volcano chocolate cakes. Yeah, cool. That came out pretty good. Um, oh, good. How's Alex doing? Your girlfriend. Allie, oh, Allie's, uh, she had her first run at the gauntlet today. She's been taking care of nothing but COVID patients today. Oh, my God. I was. I kept thinking about her. I just, um, you know. They God. took her off a of general surgery, and she's now, like, just taking care of all COVID patients. Oh, wow. Our um, niece is a, a nurse also and pregnant. And she said she'd rather work on a COVID floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She would prefer a COVID floor than a regular medical floor. Oh, so yeah. It's much better protection. She's at Mass General. Mm. Ah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what about, how about Bay State. But. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on there. Yeah, it's really. And they're not, nobody's doing electric surgery. Everything's just focused on COVID stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. And hopefully they're, they're doing, we, we got to copies of their um, ethics, you know, in terms of, um, you know, being able to figure out, um, you know, who gets the, who gets the vents and stuff like that. It's, that's really, that's another thing that's pretty difficult to read. Uh, yeah, that's hard. Who gets the resources, right? Yeah, yeah, the resource allocation. And then, you know, the issue with, with marginalized people and people of color and, you know, and, uh, and uh, just people with disabilities. Oh. You know, talking about organizations that, that need money, one of the things that I've been listening to um, a lot of times when I'm cooking is I listen to NPR and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, now they have uh, this show Connecting Points that was yeah, on yeah, WGBY. Yeah. And, and I just feel like that's something that, you know, that, that network has done a great job mm -hmm. Sure. serving the community um, and is doing better and better. And that, that show in particular, I think, they do a fabulous, you know, the woman, Carrie Saldo, I've never heard of her before. Great. And now they've got another woman who's co-host and they're both extraordinary. Great. I mean, I listen, I'm, I have the radio on, that's my company all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just another organization, local yeah. folks yeah. doing really good things. Yeah, yeah. Did um did someone have an update on the survival center and how they're doing? No. They moved to the to Jackson Street. They distributed from Jackson Street. Using well, Grow Food, Grow Food Northampton mm -hmm. and a number of other organizations are they have a really ambitious plan now to 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 try to get the local farms oh, uh, providing food. Um, for you know low-income families, I mean it's mm. incredibly. I'll, if you any of you are interested, I'll send you the, yeah. the you know they have a, a ten-year plan uh -huh. uh, for how they want to do it. It's a fabulous, mm. fabulous initiative, but they seem to be off and running. Yeah, so job. they've done some great stuff because I know that they 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 distribute. They have the farmers market and also for low-income at the senior center and other places like um all during the i mean last year it's yeah incredible they do a lot of great stuff so you know one of the one of the things that um i've you know we've been doing like everybody else uh you know our house overlooks the bike path ah. so we see all the activity on the bike path and we know to avoid 
the bike path when we want to go for walks because there's too many people. Oh, so yeah. we're, always, we're always looking for places that are not terribly populated or times of day. And one of the things that we've been doing is exploring the Mill River, sections of the Mill River mm -hmm. that are um, not visible to the road and clearly visible to the road. And one of the places that we went recently, speaking about Grow Food Northampton, you know, they, they, they have some farmland that they're renting from Crimson and Clover. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and right behind there is a section of the Mill River that, you know, the other side of that is Look Park. Yeah. And it's a very interesting, you know, kind of geography mm. in that area, very interesting history. You know, the flood mm -hmm. uh, that washed all the, you know, the bodies down from, from Haydenville and Lee. My neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it landed all in that, in that field, a lot of the, the rubble and the, there's some yeah. fascinating, you know, yeah. you know, stones. And now it's beautiful farmland. A lot of it's beautiful farmland. But there's some interesting wooded areas in there, too. Yeah. And we also explored near Yankee Hill, the Yankee Hill factory behind there. It's another section of the river that mm. I had never seen before. Mm. Um, quite interesting view, especially now that the water's really running because you're up high. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah, a lot of interesting places to walk in the city. That's that's been kind of fun. Yeah, I go out in the meadows out by the, and it was so weird. The first time I went out running, I, I after I left the tarmac by ninety one, and all of a sudden I came out, you know, in the farm fields, and there was this young girl in the middle of the field playing the accordion and singing mm. to a dog. And I, first I thought, well, am I a little hypoxic and a little delirious, you know, because I had been running. I was like, what's going on here? It was the best. <laughs> we walked up at Roberts Hill today. Very few people there. Yeah, it's not, yeah. yeah. Though I, I took my dog into that, it, it, I took Brooklyn to that, into the, the at the end of river, uh, end of, Water Street. Water Street, yeah. Yeah. Some people were going up to the left and we went down to the right, down towards the uh, sort of the Dimmick Street entrance. Mm. Um, so it was, it's getting more use than usual. Yeah. But there's a lot of land up there. Mm. Mineral Hills is probably pretty good too. I don't know. That's, I don't, I don't get out there very often. It's not really my part of town. busier than Mineral Hills. Mineral Hills? Yeah. Yeah. I went to the Beckett Quarry. That's weird and cool. Mm. They just like stopped. They just in like the fifties. They just left all their equipment there mm. after they stopped mining, and it's just like rusting in the middle of the woods. And there's all these trails that go around this pretty nice uh, quarry that has what, been reclaimed. What were they quarrying? What kind of? What, what the Probably granite, granite, right? We always call granite around here. It looks like it was granite. Granite, yeah. limestone, maybe. maybe. Lead. Maybe limestone, maybe I don't know. But metal in the, in the uh, stone. Not Lee. Lee has the uh, marble. In Lee. It's like a weird archaeological slash nature site. Mm -hmm. it's really interesting. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm gonna sign off. <laughs> oh, you go have another. <laughs> go have another beer. <laughs> I have to fend for myself for dinner. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Exactly. Really good seeing you all. Bye. Well, Bye. 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 Brian. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Take for care. everything everybody's doing. Bye. Bye.